Hello and welcome to this video which compares the Alicia Expressor hardware unit with the Alicia Expressor 500. My name is David Mackay, I'm a composer, musician, producer based in Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. For this video I have been using the Expressor which is part of the setup on MixAnalog.com. I've been using MixAnalog for six plus months and it's a great service. Tape machines, compressors, EQs, loads of great stuff. I should point out that when I started putting this video together, the Alicia Expressor was available as a single unit on Mix Analog. It is now available as part of the Alicia Mastering Bundle, in which you can use the Muse EQ, Expressor, Envelope and Character, all for one really good value bundle price. I also quite recently purchased an Alicia Ex uh, Expressor 500 myself, uh, as well as Alicia X Filter 500 Stereo EQ. And you can see that here on the screen. Uh, I have a Cranbourne Audio 500 series rack, which is also an audio interface. And I have two Cranbourne Audio Camden preamps. For this video, I wrote a small musical piece, uh, which you'll hear very soon. After finishing writing the music, I process the individual channels uh, or tracks, uh, 10 of them, on the Expressor on Mix Analog. I also took a record of the settings that I'd used on the Expressor on Mix Analog and I stored them as pictures as you can see here. Once I'd done that, I then processed the same 10 channels or tracks through the uh, Expressor 500 and I, as much as possible, tried to match the settings that I'd used on Mix Analog. In most cases, the settings were pretty similar. Occasionally, I had to alter things a little bit to get as close to the sound of the Expressor uh, um, with the Expressor 500, but they are essentially the same unit. They have exactly the same controls. So on, on the screen just now, you can see a representation of the Expressor 500. This is actually from a piece of software called Session Recall, which I've been using recently, which is really good. Really good for saving your hardware settings, uh, assuming that your hardware is not somehow remote controlled. So here we can see two lots of settings. One is my Expressor 500, the other is the Expressor, which is on Mix Analog. The first thing we're going to listen to is the musical piece that I've written. Uh, now this is the, the final mix, if you like, um, stroke master. So this is uh, this is the Mix Analog Expressor version. So the 10 tracks were processed on the Expressor on MixAnalog.com. I then brought the 10 tracks back into Ableton, did maybe a small amount of mixing in terms of level balance, and then exported that as a stereo mix. I then took the stereo mix of the 10 tracks, each individually processed with the Expressor, took the stereo mix, and use the expressor once more, this time in a typical stereo mix bus kind of way. It's perhaps worth pointing out just now that there was a software EQ on each of the 10 channels. I used the software EQ just because it was quicker. It's one that I use a lot. It's very transparent, sounds good. Um, so the 10 tracks uh, all had some EQ, some tracks had a bit of reverb, Old tracks are exactly the same when they were going through the Expressor or through the Expressor 500. I also processed the tracks uh, using a software compressor just to add to the comparison and just out of interest to see how that would uh, hold up against the hardware unit. It's a software compressor from a well-known plugin developer. It sounds good. It's not the very latest one. It's probably a few years old. But it's a sort of typical bus compressor, uh, and it also has the it also has a sidechain filter, which means I could set I could at least set that up in a similar way as to the expressors. It doesn't have all the features 
that the expressors do. It doesn't have warm mode. It doesn't have the logarithmic release. It doesn't have negative ratios. It doesn't have auto fast. It also doesn't have the extra gain reduction limiter. But it's a bus compressor. And I also added a software EQ and limiter on the master bus uh, back in the Ableton live session just to add a bit of typical kind of budget mastering, budget software mastering, the kind of thing I would do on a, any project I was working on, assuming it wasn't going to be sent to a proper mastering engineer. So I think we've got most of the technical stuff out of the way for now. Let's have a listen to the piece. It uses a vocal from 8DO Barbary vocal collection. It's called She Moved Through the Fair. It's a traditional Irish folk song, which I've written some new original music to. One other very last thing I'd like to add before we start listening to some audio examples is that the Expressor and Expressor 500 compressors are relatively transparent. So it's definitely worth bearing that in mind when listening to the audio examples, because some of them aren't exactly what you would call night and day in terms of the difference between them. In places it can be pretty subtle, so you probably will have to listen fairly closely. It's worth saying, listen on good headphones or speakers, and you may want to turn up the volume for some later examples. However, to begin with, we are going to listen to the final mix stroke master, the expressor version, and you may just want to watch out for the volume being relatively loud on this first example. She stepped away from me And she moved through the fair And so fondly I watched her Move here and move there Then she stopped Next up we have clips from the piece that you just heard. This time there's no extra processing in the form of the EQ and limiter on the master bus. So what you will hear is the audio with uh, no compression. So that is the 10 tracks with EQ and some reverb and level balancing and panning, but no compression hardware or software. Then the expressor on the 10 individual channels and the expressor over the stereo mix of those 10 channels. Uh, then the same again, but with the expressor 500. Finally, the same again, but with a plug-in software compressor. The same plug-in across the 10 channels, um, set up as close as possible to the expressors. This is the first time I've done a uh, demo or comparison video so apologies for any rough edges I'm probably explaining things over explaining things one other thing to say is the recording quality everything's been processed at 24 bit 48 kilohertz but when it comes to exporting or rendering the video the highest audio quality I have available is 440 kbps mp3 that is as part of a Windows media video file 
a high quality or, or very high quality MP3 is generally uh, considered to be 320 kbps. So hopefully the 440 kbps will be a very, very high quality MP3. And hopefully you'll be able to hear what's going on with the expressors, etc. I think you will. Listen on good headphones if you can. That's always good advice. She stepped away from me And she moved through the fair And so fondly I watched her Move here and move back Then she stopped Next, we're going to hear vocal clips similar to before, although this time there's no expressor or compressor on the Mix Plus. There is an expressor on the channel, expressor 500 on the channel, and plug-in on the channel only. The string part will also play underneath at low volume, just in case there might be any problem with the vocal part playing in isolation from a copyright point of view. After that, there'll be one of the vocal phrases repeated a couple of times for you to listen to. She stepped away from me And she moved through the fair Next we have some more individual tracks from the same piece. The comparison is going to work in exactly the same way as the previous examples. First we're going to hear percussion, then piano, and finally strings, before we move on to the final part of the comparison using She Moved Through the Fair. Thank you. 
Lastly, in this section, we're going to listen to the final mix. So that's the channels or tracks with their individual EQ, reverb panning, then with the expressor or expressor 500 or plug-in compressor on each individual channel. And in each case, the expressor over the stereo mix or the expressor 500 or again the plug-in compressor over the whole mix and in each case there's the plug-in stereo EQ and limiter. So we'll hear the final mix play through and it'll change between expressor, expressor 500 and plug-in just as before. Then we'll hear a repeated clip changing between the three compressors. Finally the final mix will play all the way through the expressor version, the expressor 500 version and then the plug-in version. So hopefully we can listen through and hear similarities and differences between the three. She stepped away from me And she moved through the fair 
So that's the end of the section of the video using She Moved Through the Fair. We're going to move on to a shorter section of the video which features an acoustic guitar and then we'll hopefully have some fun with some drums and a software synthesizer. The first example is just me playing my acoustic guitar. It's a Tanglewood acoustic. It's nothing amazing. It's a low mid-range acoustic. It has a piezo pickup inside the guitar body. So the acoustic was then going through my Cranbourne Audio Camden preamp. And importantly, inside the door, I had a acoustic guitar impulse response. And this impulse response really helps the sound of the acoustic guitar, makes it sound much more natural, much more like recording an acoustic through a microphone. Then we have some acoustic drums, which I've done using Spitfire Audio The Grange, which is a really good drum sample library, very atmospheric, vibey for want of a better word and in this example the compression is pretty heavy and it is bordering more on a special effect really finally we have a software synth pad and again the compression is fairly heavy and it's more like a special effect really one thing to note is that the synth doesn't have a plug-in compressor version this time otherwise all these examples work in much the same way as the previous examples in this video after that, I'm going to try and sum up my overall thoughts about the Elysia Expressors and how a typical plug-in compressor compares. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the end of the audio examples. To finish with, I'm going to give some of my thoughts on the expressors. After using the Mix Analog Expressor and my own Expressor 500 quite extensively for this comparison video, I can honestly say I didn't notice a huge difference between the two. I was able to achieve similar results with both. If there was a slight difference, it might be that the Expressor seemed to compress a bit more than my Expressor 500. I also needed more gain on my Expressor 500 to more closely match the Expressor. Perhaps this is to do with the physical properties of the two units being somewhat different. I think I read somewhere that the power supplied to a typical rack hardware unit would be greater from its dedicated power supply than the power supplied to a 500 series unit in a 500 series rack. This sounds logical, but I'm not an expert audio engineer or electrician so I'm not going to say that this is definitely the reason for a slightly different experience when using the two Expressor units. What I can say is I really like my Expressor 500 and I'm not going to be replacing it with an Expressor anytime soon. In my opinion, the Elysia Expressor, whether in regular 19 inch rack or 500 series form, adds a number of desirable qualities to the audio that is passed through it. Some of the descriptive words for the expressors previously used are worth repeating. Warmth, weight, three-dimensionality, and the sense of the audio being more real and believable. And what I mean by real and believable is that the audio is better represented to the human ear and brain with the expressor or expressor 500 present rather than without and with the digital audio on its own with no analog processing. I think the examples that demonstrate this most successfully or most obviously in this video are in the final mix of my piece She Moved Through the Fair. And in terms of the comparison to a typical plug-in compressor, if you go back and listen to either the Expressor version or the Expressor 500 version and then compare that to the plug-in only version, I think you can hear the difference. And in my opinion, it's a very positive difference. As mentioned earlier, the expressors are relatively transparent compressors and I don't think it's any big secret they are designed and marketed as such. However, it is possible to get more character out of them, particularly if you experiment with the warm mode function, the advanced attack and release options and the negative ratios available. I think it's worth pointing out that these examples used an analog compressor only Typically, when mixing and producing music on analog equipment, you would use analog preamps, EQ and compression, perhaps as part of a channel strip and the master channel on a desk, as well as other analog equipment such as a tape machine and a limiter, plus maybe some other units. The cumulative effect of these processing stages can shape the music mix in a fairly dramatic way. If we think in terms of numbers or percentages, and for argument's sake say that when you process a single track of a mix through an Elysia Expressor, it improves the audio 1%, or put another way, makes it 1% more analog, then this cumulative effect can really be seen to add up and can also perhaps become easier to quantify. This is an arbitrary percentage I have proposed for demonstration purposes. In fact, I would argue the benefit, if you could quantify it, is more than a 1% improvement for each track going through an expressor or other piece of analog equipment. You could argue that a digital file being passed through analog equipment will become 100% or even infinitely more analog in its sound. You could also have a discussion about digital audio being passed through analog equipment only to be returned once more to digital. But just because the audio is returned to digital, it doesn't mean that somehow all that analog character that's been added is instantly undone. If we just keep things simple and say, imagine a typical mix of a song by a rock, pop or indie or other band. The tracks might include lead vocals, backing vocals, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, bass guitar, keyboards, stroke piano, and let's say eight individual drum tracks, kick, snare, hi-hat, three tom mics, two overhead mics. That's 14 tracks of audio in total. Now let's apply this 1% idea to the 14 tracks. That's a 14% improvement or 14% more analog sound for passing the tracks through an analog EQ. It's a 14% improvement or 14% more analog sound for passing the tracks through 
an analog compressor, such as the Expressor. Each track going to tape individually adds, let's say, 2%. I'm going to be a bit more generous here because I absolutely love the sound of the tape machines available on Mix Analog, but I still think 2% is conservative. Nevertheless, that's another 28% from the analog tape. We're now at 56% improvement, or 56% more analog sound. You could probably add another at least 3% each for an analog compressor, EQ and limiter on the stereo mix, and that would take us to a 65% improvement, or 65% more analog sound. So I think that is one way of demonstrating and thinking about the difference analog equipment of the kind that's available on Mix Analog can make. We don't need to think in terms of numbers or percentages though. Take a well performed and recorded mix and pass individual channels or stems or the stereo mix through the units on Mix Analog and you'll be able to hear the positive difference for yourself. Thanks very much for watching and listening and I hope people will find the content useful. A quick disclaimer, I'd just like to point out that I'm not an employee of Mix Analog or Elysia, but I am a customer of both. The guys at Mix Analog kindly featured me in one of their newsletters earlier this year. Other than that, I'm not affiliated with either company. The Mix Analog team gave me a supply of credits, enabling me to use the Elysia Expressor for the purposes of this video. I have to admit, this video has taken a lot of work but it's been entirely my own decision about how to go about making it. Nevertheless, I'll hopefully be getting a small amount of credit by way of a gift from Mix Analog, so I can use some of that great analog gear on the platform. Regardless of making this video, I would have remained a very happy customer of both Mix Analog and Alicia. But I can confirm that all opinions expressed in this video are my own and in no way have been influenced by Mix Analog or Alicia. Finally, a big thank you to Gabriella and all the team at Mix Analog for inviting me to make this comparison video of the Alicia Expressor and Expressor 500.